In the last video I got as far as reinstalling the carriage and uh, testing that and it was basically working. Since then I've been making various adjustments to get the machine to work more reliably. Um, I had an issue with the carriage return. It would return all the way but then it wouldn't start feeding back again. And that was just uh, adjustments of the carriage return drum. That was fairly easy to resolve. Um, this is plain paper of course, it's not going to feed properly, this machine expects tractor feed paper but I don't have any of this width. But it will demonstrate that it can print. I then had to adjust the um, carriage return and line feed mechanism that's attached to the selector head. So when the machine receives a carriage return or line feed instruction or byte, then that is selected in the selector drum like any other character, but they're not printed. Instead, they're used to activate some linkages down behind the selector drum that in turn operate some linkages within the carriage itself. And they cause the carriage to return to the home position or to feed a line, depending on what the command was. Uh, but they need adjusting, they weren't working correctly. The main adjustments have been for the setting pin. I think I mentioned in a previous video that this seemed to be adjusted wrong and indeed it was, it was printing garbage now and again and that was just because the pin was sometimes hitting more than one of the selector fingers. So I adjusted that. I then had to adjust the uh, standby uh, pull because that's on the same shaft so when I adjusted the uh, setting lever then uh, I had to adjust the pulls to stop the machine running continuously. Once I'd done that I needed to find some way to send it data the encoding on these machines is fairly unusual. The actual coding of the data itself is fairly standard, but as I mentioned in the previous video, the uh, start and stop bits vary from machine to machine and they are to enable the mechanism to prepare itself for the incoming data. The incoming data is then a fairly standard format that's uh, copied into the selecting pins uh, and then you have one or more stop bits to allow the machine to complete the printing of the character that's just been received. If you were to stop the machine immediately after it received the last character that you intend to send, as we saw in the last video, the um, character may be stored in the selector drum, but it won't be printed because it's printed at the end of the following character. So in other words, you need to kind of send it a dummy character at the end of the data stream, otherwise the last character won't be printed. Okay, so once I'd made those adjustments, I needed some way to send it some data. The specification for the solenoid states that it's uh, plus or minus 80 volts that are required to operate it. Uh, however, that 80 volts is only really needed if you're intending to use this at a distance. These machines normally expect to be talking to a similar machine at the end of a long piece of wire, and that wire can be up to 40 miles long. However, if you are using it locally, then you don't need 80 volts. And the 80 volts is in fact just the maximum voltage that you can feed into the solenoid directly. That is, if you're driving it directly, then you don't need to put 80 volts into it. It'll work quite happily at 15 or 20 volts. Uh, and I'm running this at 20 volts, so it would, I must certainly run happily at much less than that. Uh, but I still needed a way to generate data. The transmitter is in the keyboard and I haven't uh, got round to the keyboard yet, we'll look at that in a future video. Uh, so I needed to send data from the RS-232 port on my PC, so I needed a circuit to take that data and convert it into the plus or minus 20 volts at uh, around 200 milliamps. So I put together an amazing piece of modern electronic engineering um, I'm sure you'll agree that's an amazing piece of work, but uh, in all seriousness it, it does work, it's just a very simple circuit that uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on. I will get the transmitter working fairly soon, so uh, this is really just to allow testing of the basic machine and make sure that all the adjustments are correct. Okay, so what I'll do now is send it a very simple test file from the PC. I'll just start up the machine. Turn the machine off now so you can hear me more clearly. 
a lot of this file does have a line feed at the end and a carriage return. You can see the carriage return worked. The line feed didn't work simply because it's the wrong sort of paper for this machine. So I'll manually wind it up and hopefully you can see that it's printed successfully. I'll just zoom in so you can have a, a better look. So as you can see it's printing fine. Uh, all the adjustments are correct. They have to be correct otherwise um, we wouldn't get this far. So in the next video I can start looking at the transmitter and um, it does have a local echo function so we can then send data direct from the keyboard to the uh, printer but if I need to I can still use the PC to send data through the RS-232 port. Any comments welcome. In the next video I'll look at the keyboard.